Hi, not just from 10 Minute Physics here. Welcome to tutorial number two. This time I'm going to show you how to write 3D simulations in a web browser and for this we're going to turn our 2D ball simulation into a 3D simulation. Let's start. Here we are in Visual Studio Code again. We use the HTML skeleton that we wrote in the first tutorial. So we have the HTML section and then we have the head section. Inside we define the title that will appear in the tab of the browser. And this time we also define a nicer font and the font size. In the body section we have the title that will appear in the body of the page. And then instead of a canvas we use a general div element and give it also an ID to access it later. In the script part we also have a simulation function as before and an update function that calls simulate and make sure that the update function is called again and again. And the only command that we actually have is to call update for a first time. Writing a 3D simulation is almost as simple as writing a 2D simulation. The reason is that there's a very cool 3D library called 3.js. Have a look at their webpage at 3.js.org. It runs in any browser because it's based on JavaScript. Have a look at their examples. For instance, this little city, as you can see, it can draw any 3D model. We can change the camera view and it can also animate models like this little tram, exactly what we need to create our 3D simulations. Adding 3.js into our project is super simple. We simply add these two lines here. The first includes the 3.js library itself and the second adds a control to move the camera. Then we need four additional variables, the three scene, a renderer, a camera and a camera control. Now we need a function that initializes the three library. We first create the three scene object. Then we add various elements to this scene. I copied the code below from various examples. First I add a few lights and then I create a ground plane. Then I create the renderer. This code is also taken from their examples. A camera, again, part of their examples, and finally an object. And this is the only tutorial specific code. First, I create a sphere geometry with a radius of 20 centimeters and a certain resolution for the visual mesh. Then I create a material with color red and with the sphere geometry and the material, I can create the sphere object. I place it at a certain location in 3D space and add it to the 3 scene. In the callback function on window resize, we have to update the camera as well as the renderer with the new window width and height. In the update function, we still call the simulate function, but we also call the render function of the renderer and we update the camera control. Finally, before we call update, we call init 3 scene. Here you can see how this looks like in the browser. We have our cannonball, the red sphere here in the center, and we can move the camera using the mouse. Before we look into the simulation code, we're going to add two buttons to our page, a run button and a restart button. We can specify which function is called when we click the button by the onClick property. For the run button, we call the function run and for the restart button, the function restart. We also specify an ID for the run button to be able to access it below. Here you see the two function. For the restart function, we simply call location reload, which just reloads the page in the browser. For the run function, we want a specific behavior. We want to be able to stop and start the simulation. So for this, we define a Boolean variable pause to specify whether our simulation is paused or not. In the run function, we first get the object of the button via the ID. Then we check whether our simulation is paused. If the simulation is paused and the user clicks the button, we switch the text to stop. Otherwise, we switch it to run. And then we change the state of our simulation. So now let's look how this looks in the browser. Here you can see our two buttons, the run button and the restart button. When we click the restart button, the page is reloaded. When we click the run button, the text switches to stop and back to run again. We are finally ready to do some physics. 
For this, I define a variable called physics scene, which is a structure that contains information about our simulation. The first one is gravity. As you can see, I use the class vector3 provided by 3. It has three components, x, y, and z, and is very useful to store 3D information like a position, a velocity, or a force. Then I define dt, which is our time step size, a world size, the variable pause that tells us whether our simulation is paused or not, and then a variable that will contain our simulation objects. Next, we define a class for the ball. In the constructor, we provide the position, the radius, the velocity, and the scene. First, we store the position, the radius, and the velocity in member variables. Now we create the visual mesh for three as we did before. We create a geometry, a material, and then create the visual mesh. We set its position to pause and then we add it to the three scene. The core method of the ball class is the simulation method. In the constructor, we created two member variables for the position and for the velocity. In the simulation method, we want to update these two variables based on Newton's second law. And you can see this in these two statements. What we do is we add to the velocity gravity times dt and to the position the velocity times dt, exactly as in the 2D case. Then we make sure that the ball doesn't leave a certain area. And finally, we update the position of the visual mesh. That's all. Next, we add two additional functions, the init physics function and the simulate function. In the init physics function, we set up our scene. First, we choose a radius, a position and a velocity for our ball. Then we create a new ball object and add it to the objects of the physics scene. In the simulate function, we first check whether our simulation is paused. If so, we return. Otherwise, we iterate through all the objects in the physics scene and call simulate. Now we have to call these two functions in the right places. We call init physics right after any three scene and in the update function we call simulate that's it now let's have a look at how this looks in the web browser so here's our final result as before we can change the camera view we can zoom in and out but now we can also run the simulation so as in the 2d case we have a cannonball that jumps up and down and is kept within a certain boundary Now comes the really cool part. We can turn our demo into a VR demo with 3.js. All we need is this class VR button. I wasn't able to link it as I linked the camera control, so I copied pasted their code into our HTML file in order to be standalone. Now we have to change three simple things. In the init3 scene at the bottom, we add these three lines. The first one adds a VR button. Then we have to enable VR and then we change our update logic. We tell the renderer what our update function is and so we can remove the request animation frame update and also the camera is now controlled by the VR. Of course, it's not possible to show you the result in this video. Here is just a recording of my cell phone in VR mode. Now that you know everything about 3D simulations, we will turn back to 2D for the next few tutorials because it is easier to explain simulation concepts in 2D.